and welcome to our latest Cambly live session. Uh, to those of you guys who don't know, I am Daryl. I'm going to be your tutor today. We're just going to wait for everybody that wants to join uh, the lesson, to join the chat, and to start watching. In the meantime, please, guys, send through a little hello. Tell us where you're from. It's so nice to know where everyone comes from, that it's a nice big uh, Cambly community. So please send it through. Also, guys, remember that uh, we're getting close to things like Black Friday. So you guys should start watching out on all kinds of social media, all of Cambly social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Look for all the, the discounts that are going to come. You can even go, and I will remind everybody later on, you can even go to the YouTube community tab here, and you'll get up to, I think, 50% discount. So don't forget to do that. Um, ooh, I see some uh, highs coming through already. We've got uh, Fatir saying hi. We've got uh, Kalipan saying thanks, and he has good news. Well, you can share that with us. That will be great. Um, also, guys, remember that uh, if you've missed any of the other Cambly live sessions with me or with the other tutors, you can go to the playlist and you can just watch all of them. They're all there. And I think the, there's even a link that's going to be pinned to the top of the, the comment section, the, the chat of this video, probably other videos too. Click on it, go to the playlist, and you can catch up on all of the Cambly live sessions that you've missed. Um, ooh, we, the, the good news from Kilipan is he got 100 marks on his English exam. Well, well done. That is amazing. I think uh, that deserves a round of applause. It's really, really good. All right, so you guys see, it can be done. can be done. You can get really good results. Uh, and if you don't know, Cambly is a great place to learn English, whether it's for an English exam or it's for a conversational English or business English. So you'll find teachers just like me, and you'll be able to increase your English proficiency. All right. Oh, we've got some more highs. We've got uh, Shazia saying, hello, sir. Rata Naporn saying, hi. Ibtahal, hello to everyone. Uh, I hope I'm saying your names right. Thank you for joining us today. Tell us where you're from. It's always nice to know where everyone is from. So what are we doing today in our Cambly live session? Today is the second part of our character study literature analysis. So before we looked at heroes, protagonists, we looked at how to say what a, the hero has, his personality, his motivations, what makes him unique. We looked at all the things that go into a character, and then we looked at a few uh, heroes. I think we looked at Jane Eyre and Sherlock Holmes. Today, I think, is the more fun uh, section, which is the antagonists, the bad guys the villains. And I think we all kind of like the villains, a good villain, uh, because it allows us to kind of connect with our own dark side. So we all love to watch a villain. Sometimes they're more fun than the hero. And sometimes we even want them to win just because they maybe uh, have charisma or something interesting about them. So today we're going to go through firstly what makes a good bad guy or what makes an effective villain. We'll discuss that a little bit, and we'll do a little bit of revision, tiny, tiny bit of revision during that about what makes a character that we did in our other lesson. And then we're going to go through some very well-known villains and bad guys, and we're going to analyze them. We're going to see what they are about. As we do that, I will tell you maybe the story, that if you don't know the story, for example, when we come to Lady Macbeth, if you're not clear about the story. We'll discuss it very briefly and then talk about the character. All right, let's see. I think we've got some more hellos. Uh, we've got uh, Ratana Porn is from Thailand, and Kaliopan says he's taking English literature school, so it helps him. That's great. We've got Darshala from Sri Lanka, Stacy from South Korea, uh, Ibtahal is from Iraq, uh, Masum Shikdar is from Bangladesh, and Mohammed is from Pakistan. All right, thank you for joining us, guys. Also, remember, today is an interactive lesson. So what I want you to do 
is to send through your favorite bad guys from movies, from books, a bad guy that you just liked, that was interesting to watch. Or if you don't want to do a bad guy, send us through your favorite hero. We didn't get a lot of time to look at all the heroes last time. So send through your favorite hero, and we will try to analyze your favorites. All right, so let's start. Let's start. So like I said, we're looking at antagonists, bad guys, or I like the word villain. A villain just is a better word for bad guy. And we're looking at what makes an effective bad guy. Remember that a lot of movies, a lot of stories, sometimes they're, they're not well written. And you're going to get a character that is not really interesting. He's not a good bad guy. So a good bad guy has some of most of these things. So let's look at them. So firstly, a good bad guy is either similar or very different to the hero, the protagonist. Let's have an example of this. So there is a movie coming out. I think it's coming out this week. It's the sequel to Black Panther, which was a very popular, you know, it's a superhero movie from a few years ago. And in the original Black Panther, we had a... Um, antagonist, a bad guy named Killmonger. And if you guys don't remember, so in the movie, in the story, um, there's a fictional African country called Wakanda. They have a, um, a very special um, metal and they are very rich as a country, but they have been hiding themselves from the rest of the world. And now Killmonger, who is the bad guy, he wants to take the money that they have and the resources they have and share it with the rest of the world and specifically with Africans and African-Americans. So he's a bad guy, but he has a interesting um, point of view. So he's very different from the, the hero. The hero wants to keep Wakanda kind of separate. That's how Wakanda is. And he wants to open it up. So it's very different to the hero. And as you can see, that kind of antagonist, someone that we can understand that actually it makes sense, he wants to help people with the money, maybe he goes about it in a bad way, we understand him. And when we understand the bad guy, that makes them very interesting. All right, so the bad guy should be similar or very different, very different, so that we can see different points of view from the hero. Then, a good bad guy has a backstory. He is three-dimensional. What does this mean? It means that a good uh, bad guy, he has a past. He has a history. He has stuff that's happened to him that has shaped him to become what he is today. And that's very different from sometimes we watch a movie and the bad guy is just bad. We don't know why. We don't know where he came from. We don't know. He's just bad and evil. We don't understand why? And that makes him ineffective. He's not so interesting. Let's think of another example. Let's say that it's a movie and the bad guy, let's say it's a drama, okay? And the bad guy is an abusive father. And then we learn that when he was young, he was abused. So he's still the bad guy. But now we understand him better. He has history. He has a past. He has a backstory. And that makes us like him more, makes us empathize, empathize uh, with his point of view, even though he's the bad guy. So good bad guys have a good backstory. Then a good bad guy is a match for the hero. So we, we think that the villain could win. We have to believe that. If we don't think the villain can win, it's not going to be a very interesting story. The bad guy must be a good match must be able to fight the hero and win, and he could try. He could do it. And a great example of this is in romantic comedies. This is what the example I like to use. So in a romantic comedy, you usually have the guy, he likes the girl, and then there's another guy that also likes the girl. Now, that other guy, we must believe that he could win the girl. If we don't believe that, then we're not interested in the story. If he is a good bad guy, and we believe that he could win the girl, maybe he can do it by lying or cheating, but we believe that it could happen, that makes him a good bad guy. And that makes the story interesting 
to watch. All right, so he must be a match for the hero. Obviously, and we discussed this before in terms of character in general, characters need to have wants and needs. They, they want to do something. So just having a character that is evil, bad, because they're bad, is not interesting. It, it's, it's very on the surface. So there's nothing underneath. He's just bad. Who cares? If he has wants and needs, even if they are maybe weird and twisted, it at least makes us understand him better. Okay? So another example of this could be a serial killer. So a lot of serial killer movies, and a serial killer is someone that kills in the same way many, many times. Now, what makes them interesting, besides from maybe the way they kill, is that they are usually trying to um, get out some negative emotion or a traumatic event that they have suffered through. So that's their need. That's their want. That's why they are killing in the same way. And again, that makes them now interesting because he's not just killing people because he likes to kill people. He's killing people because there's an emotional need inside him. And again, that makes him interesting. All right. And then obviously a good bad guy needs to have all the character elements that we discussed previously. So must have motivations. He must want to do something because of something else very similar to wants and needs. He, he should have something unique and different about him. He should have personality traits. So maybe he is arrogant. Maybe she is ambitious. Maybe he is jealous. Maybe he is shy. These are all things that make the personality, makes the person. Um, sometimes approach an antagonist can change. So sometimes we can have uh, the bad guy go through a change, a development, just like the good guy. Remember, we've discussed this before, that stories are really about change. The guy is one way at the beginning and then becomes something else at the end. And a good bad guy sometimes changes. We're going to discuss that later when we go through some of the other well-known villains. All right, A good character, a good bad guy actually can change. Doesn't have to, but it can. Obviously, um, they have to have, like we said before, a character has relationships. So whether it's a relationship with um, um, family or friends or non-friends or enemies, they must have relationships. Just having a bad guy that is bad, that kills, and he's not connected to anybody, it's not interesting. That's not a good bad guy. And another one that we discussed last time that was very important is author's intention. Why did the writer choose this character? And, and why did he maybe choose the change or the theme that this antagonist um, um, shows? So maybe a good example of this, we go back to our story of Black Panther. Perhaps the author's intention was to show that wealth should be redistributed. We should share wealth and what we have with the rest of the world to make everybody happy. So you've got the bad guy that actually has this very interesting theme, and that could have been the author's intention. All right. And of course, we have a few other things that uh, I didn't want to put everything on the list. Remember, other character elements could be their values. It could be their strengths. It could be their weaknesses. It could be their flaws. We're going to discuss that. One thing that is perhaps wrong with them that creates the story. So all that stuff we're going to analyze with our, our characters. And another very interesting thing, and I put it here at the bottom because it doesn't have to always be with every bad guy, but sometimes the antagonist is a tragic hero. We discussed this a little bit in another um, literature uh, Cambly session. The tragic hero has a fatal Floor. He has something wrong inside him. Maybe he is too ambitious. He wants to be king. He wants to be this. He wants to rule the world. Whatever. Um, that's his fatal flaw. He can never see, you know what, maybe I should stop. Maybe this is too much. Maybe he's obsessed 
with something. We're going to discuss that as well. That is their fatal flaw. And sometimes the antagonist is almost the main character. And that's when we call them the tragic hero. So they're the hero because we watch their story. We're following their story. But they are tragic because they're actually an antagonist to themselves. There's something inside them that is affecting them, breaking them all the time. All right. So I think we understand um, a lot now of what makes an effective bad guy. Let's see if you guys have sent any interesting um, bad guys. Uh, we've got someone here from South Africa. Oh, okay. We've got some good um, characters here. So Ibtahal Ibt has said the Joker from Batman. So I'm going to write that down over here so we don't forget him. That's a very interesting character. We'll analyze him. We've got, um, I saw another one here. Someone says Rose from the Titanic movie. So that's a hero, okay? We're going to take a look at her later. That's also a very interesting character to look at. Thank you. Who sent that? Um, again, Iptal. All right. And then we've got Jeffrey Dahmer. All right. So that's another interesting real-life character that we will look at later. All right. And Maleficent. Ooh, that's, a, that's also a good one. All right. I want to write these down. So we don't forget them. All right. Excellent. And who sent that? That was from Joy. Thank you, Joy. And Jeffrey Dahmer was from Napa. Thank you for that. Um, I'm not familiar with this character, Hawk Moth, in Miraculous Ladybug from Anura. Maybe you can send, maybe Anura, you can send us a little bit of information about Hawk Moth, because unfortunately I don't know that character. If you send us the information, we can look at it. Maybe you can tell us what their motivations are, their traits, what makes them an interesting character. All right, so keep it coming. Carry on sending um, the heroes and the villains that we can take a look at. We're going to start with Lady Macbeth. All right, Lady Macbeth, which is a um, classic character um, from Shakespeare. I'm going to go through the story very quickly, very briefly. So Macbeth is actually the main character. Um, and he is the, he's like a lord. Lady Macbeth is his wife, and she kind of encourages him to kill the king, to take um, the king's place and become king. So Lady Macbeth is firstly very ambitious, okay? Very ambitious. Maybe too much, right? So she's ambitious, and another great word, I'm going to write it here in big, is she is ruthless. So ruthless means she doesn't care what needs to be done, who, who needs to be killed, we will do it because we want to win. We want to be king. So whoever has to die, that's what's going to happen. And what happens to Lady Macbeth, and this is really interesting, is that she has this change. So after the king is dead and uh, other people are dead as well, she becomes very, very guilty. All right, so she has this big change. She becomes very, very guilty. She, there's a very famous scene where she imagines blood. She sees blood on her hands when there is nothing there. And she tries to wash her hands as much as she can, but it's still there. So she becomes almost mad with this guilt. So that's a very interesting change. She starts ambitious, ruthless. Kill the king, we can take over the kingdom. And then she becomes very guilty, and eventually it leads to her committing suicide. It doesn't happen in the, pl in the play. It happens off, off screen, um, but that's what happens. She commits suicide. The guilt is just too much for her. Uh, and Macbeth is a great play, very uh, interesting. You guys can go try to read it. It's, it's Shakespeare, and I've always liked Shakespeare. And as an interesting little side note, there was a real king called Macbeth uh, in Scotland. Uh, I'm not sure of the date exactly. And he did kill um, the previous king, Duncan, very similar to the story. But obviously, we don't know if there was a lady Macbeth, the real one, kind of pushing him on. But we can see how this uh, makes her very interesting. She's not just evil for the sake of evil. She's ambitious. 
She's ruthless. She wants stuff, but then she goes through this change. And it's interesting to see her go through that change. All right. So that is Lady Macbeth. Let's do something from Lord of the Rings. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole story of Lord of the Rings. I'm just looking at the movies and not really at the books or the additional material that's connected to the books. And I've written here Gollum versus Sauron. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen Lord of the Rings. And I would, I would ask you to think, is Sauron, according to what we said, is he a good bad guy? Because if you think about it, we never see him. We never learn anything about him. In, this, in, this, in the movies, we don't know his backstory. We don't know why he is the way he is. We just know that he wants the ring to rule Middle Earth. That's it. So he's not really an effective bad guy in terms of what we've said here. He's not really interesting. The one that is interesting is Gollum. So you guys will remember that Gollum is the, he was kind of human. And then over many years of holding on to the ring of power, he becomes very thin. He becomes almost a monster because all he wants is the ring. And it kind of consumes him. It makes him evil and ugly. All right, but, but Gollum is not just one-dimensional. He's three-dimensional. And Gollum, the main thing about him is he is conflicted. So conflicted means he is going one way, then another way. And there are lots of the, the famous scenes in the movie when he is speaking to himself. The one is, is kind of like a, a good Gollum, and he, he wants to be friends with the heroes. And the other Gollum is a bad Gollum and says, we should kill them. We should take the ring. We should do this. And that conflict makes him very interesting because as the story goes on, we don't know which Gollum is, is going to win. Will he, want, will he actually kind of change and say, I'm, I'm done with the ring? Or will he give in to his bad side and do what, ha what he has to do to get the ring? And obviously, you guys know that at the end, uh, what happens to Gollum is that um, he does give in completely to the bad side. All right. And that is part of the author's intention. So he gives in to the bad side to show the danger of obsession. Well, one of the things he shows is the danger of obsession. So Gollum is obsessed with the ring and that eventually leads to his death. So one of the reasons we have is that J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, I think there's, an, there's no extra R there, J.R.R. Tolkien wanted to show the danger of obsession. And the ring itself is all about people becoming obsessed with it and wanting power and wanting it. And that can show us that maybe in our, our lives, are we obsessed with something? Should we maybe think, is this good? Is this bad? Maybe we need to go with the, bad, the good side of Gollum. Um, and we, we looked at also the things that make him unique. It's his um, appearance. The very, very thin um, body, the, the big head, the giant eyes, it makes him very unique. So he has a unique appearance. And all of that makes him a very, very effective bad guy. All right. Then we have a, we've discussed Harry Potter a lot in these uh, literature Cambly sessions. Uh, so we're going to look at, obviously, Voldemort. So... Let's talk about it. Let's go through it. Is Voldemort, uh, does he have a backstory? Is he three-dimensional? I definitely think that uh, in the movies, they show that there is a backstory there. We, we see his childhood. We understand a little bit about it in the books, even more so. So we, we kind of understand him in a way, or at least know how he got to this point. He is definitely a match for Harry, right? He has um, a huge amount of magic. Harry and the rest of the wizarding world, you know, he can fight them, all right? He's also got his followers. Um, he has wants and needs. I don't think we exactly know what he wants to do after he takes over the wizarding world, but um, he wants to take over and get rid of all the, the half-breeds, I think they were called, or the mudbloods. He wants everything 
to be pure. That's his want and his need. Um, and is he similar or different to the protagonist? I think he is very similar to Harry. Harry is kind of an outcast. He is outside of the wizarding world. He's always um, asking questions because he doesn't understand things. Um, at school, he is um, kind of seen as different. And we learn from Voldemort's backstory that he is the same. He was always seen as different, even to himself. Um, so they are very similar in that way. All right. And I think you guys can answer this for me. All right. You can send it through in the chat. Do you think that Voldemort changes? Does Voldemort change during the course of, I mean, there were like eight movies, seven books. Does he change in any way? And what do you think the author's intention is? Why did J.K. Rowling write Voldemort as she did? What do you think she's trying to say? All right, so you guys can send that in the chat. Let's do uh, one of the uh, characters that you guys have sent through. Let's do the Joker. Let me give myself some space here. All right, so the Joker, I think, is a very, very interesting character. Let's go through what makes an effective villain and see what, uh, how he measures up. So firstly, I think we can say he is very different from Batman. Batman has rules. He is very ordered. One of his main rules is that he's not supposed to kill. Okay? He doesn't kill. The Joker has no rules. The Joker is crazy, insane. There are no rules. Everything is chaos to him. So the Joker is full of chaos. There are no rules. Very, very different from Batman. Okay? Then, I want you guys to tell me. Uh, you can say it in the chat. Does the Joker have a backstory? Is he three-dimensional? Does he have history? You guys tell me that. Let's look at uh, the others. Um, is he a match? for the hero. I think in all of the movies and all of the stories and all of the, the graphic novels, he is a match for Batman, okay? He is smart like Batman. He can uh, manipulate, he can do stuff. He is definitely a match for Batman. Now, this is an interesting one. What do we think the Joker's wants and needs are? I think the, one of the main needs that the Joker has is to, um, be uh, connected to Batman. They often say that the Joker needs to have Batman to fight with because there's no one else that is of the same level. So I think the Joker needs to fight Batman. That's one of his main uh, needs and wants. It could be because he gets bored, right? He's, he's crazy, the world's crazy for him. So he needs to fight Batman to kind of define himself. And that's a very interesting need. That's why he does crazy things. There's so many stories of crazy things he does just to kind of get at Batman because he wants to interact with him. Uh, we can take a look and think, um, does he change? I don't think the Joker really changes. Okay, It's not necessary for a character to always change. Uh, I don't think he really changes. He does have relationships. One of the main relationships is that he has Batman. There's also uh, Harley Quinn in the, I think, in the animated series and in the comic books, which is his romantic interest. So he's not just like a bad guy without relationships connected to him. And we have lots of things that make him unique. All right. Again, his appearance makes him very unique. All right. So that is the Joker. Um, let's look at a hero for a change. Okay, so someone, uh, I forget who, uh, sent Rose from Titanic. You got, uh, to those of you guys that maybe you haven't seen Titanic or seen it in a long time, so Rose meets Jack on the Titanic. They fall in love. Um, uh, Rose is supposed to marry someone else, and that causes a problem, and they try to obviously break them apart and to, uh, at one point, kill uh, Jack, um, and then the Titanic sinks, and it's this mad 
rush uh, for Rose to find Jack and for them to try to save themselves. And I'm not going to tell you what happens in the end, just in case you guys have not seen it. It's a really good movie and you guys should see it. So let's go through the different elements of uh, a character and see what Rose has, what makes her different and unique. So let's look at her personality traits. I think the first thing that she has is she is very curious. So when she meets Jack, she asks a lot of questions. Uh, when she sees he's an artist, she wants to see things. So she's very curious about the world. I think another thing we can say about her is, remember we talked about this, is that role or importance in society is a big thing about a character. And Rose is seen as a thing by her mother. Her mother wants to marry her to this guy to get the guy's money because the mother is kind of obsessed with status and money. So Rose is, um, is seen as a thing in society. She, she's not even seen as a person with her own wants and needs and motivations. Her mother sees her as a thing to like sell to this guy. And that really uh, makes her change and actually helps her realize her mother is not there for her. She needs to be there for her. That's her growth. To realize that she, she doesn't have to be there to make her family rich and to help have them uh, get to a certain level. She can be whoever she wants to be. And that's her change. So that is the big change that Rose goes through is she becomes independent. Very independent. Um, what else could we say? Obviously, she has a relationship with um, Jack, and she has relationships with her mother, with uh, her fiancé. The author's intention, I think, is, again, to show that she became independent. That's to show that we can also become independent. We can get rid of the past, move on, change, become better than we were. All right, so that's Rose and uh, the Joker. Let's look at another uh, famous one from history, uh, from literature, not from history. All right, let me just bring it up here. So I want to look at, oh, let's see if you guys have sent any more. Let me, let me look at here. All right, so what do we have? Um, uh, okay, Hawkmoth. Bane. Someone said Bane from Batman. Thanos. All right, well, we'll try to do Thanos later on as well, if we can. And that is from um, Stacy. Thank you. All right, so Anura says Hawkmoth is a cartoon character. All right, that, that doesn't mean that he's a bad character. You can still tell us about him. Uh, we've just discussed the Joker. Thanos, they're also originally cartoon or comic book characters. Um, someone says, my writing is very scary and speedy. All right, I'll take that as a compliment. Um, what do we have here? All right, so Stacy has answered our question and says, that she saw the movie about the backstory of the Joker, and he was not a villain from the beginning. His childhood was very unhappy, and he was abused by his stepfather. All right? I think that's the, the recent Joker movie, which was very interesting. And yes, so there, he is given this backstory as to why he kind of breaks and becomes insane. All right? And the great thing about the Joker is that there are lots of different Jokers. So that one Joker, it has that great backstory and it allows us to understand, yes, he was abused and the world kind of abused him and it broke him eventually. All right. Um, and then someone says Professor Moriarty in Sherlock Holmes. That's again from Anura. So we'll try to get to Moriarty. Okay, my scary, speedy handwriting. What I want to look at uh, is just a couple of other famous ones first. Uh, so let's look at, I've discussed it before, and it's a great book. It's uh, Dorian Gray. And I'm going to look at him, uh, Dorian Gray, and another famous character called Captain Ahab at the same time because they are both examples of what we said as the tragic hero. Okay, so this is going to be our tragic heroes. We've got Dorian Gray. And we have uh, ooh, Captain Ahab. 
All right, so let's just go through the stories very, very quickly, and then we can uh, analyze them. So Dorian Gray, I've mentioned to you guys before, it's a famous um, novel from Oscar Wilde, and it's about this guy that has a painting made of himself. And this guy starts to do horrible things, really horrible things to people, um, all types of stuff as the years go by. But every time he does a horrible thing, something happens on the picture. So um, maybe there'll be a cut or something that will appear on the picture, but Dorian himself stays very pure looking. Even as the years go by, Dorian stays very young looking, but the painting becomes old. And he realizes this and he, he kind of says that, well, I can do what I want, and nothing's gonna happen to me. I'm not gonna be punished, all right? And that kind of becomes uh, his fatal flaw, all right? And it's a great fatal flaw called, and I love this word, and it's a new word for you guys, I think, hedonism. Hedonism means to want pleasure all the time. So it could be any kind of pleasure. It just means I don't wanna work. I don't wanna take responsibility. I want to do what I want, and I want to have fun all the time. That is hedonism. And so Dorian Gray decides to be very hedonistic, almost to an extreme. Like I said, he, he hurts people. He does bad stuff, really bad stuff. And the painting takes everything. He doesn't take anything. Eventually, I'm sure you guys are not going to read this because it's, it's, not, it, it's a good book, but it's, it's a little old. Uh, at the end, so... Um, he be, kind of like um, becomes very manic and mad about things and the painting gets destroyed and then all the bad stuff that was on the painting ends up on Daria. So he, he uh, in a minute, he ages and all the scars, all the things that he's done suddenly attach to him and he dies, obviously. And no one knows who the old guy is when they find him because Darian doesn't look like that. So it's this tale of hedonism and vanity. That is his fatal flaw. And then we have Captain Ahab. All right. Now, this is from the book Moby Dick, which is about a, a whale. And we're not going to go through the whole story. Captain Ahab is obsessed with killing this whale because he feels that it, uh, you know, it, it's, it's done something to him. We're not going to go through the whole story. And he's obsessed with wanting this whale. No matter who gets hurt, no matter what happens, uh, no matter what happens to his ship, no matter what happens to him, he is going to kill this whale no matter what happens. And that is his fatal flaw of obsession. So his fatal flaw, ooh, isn't that too weird, is obsession. He is so obsessed um, with killing this whale that nothing else matters, not even his own life. And of course, at the end, you know, he cost him his life as well. So these are, again, tragic heroes. They have these fatal flaws, but they're still the main character. We're watching the whole story through them, but they're actually kind of bad. And that makes it interesting to, to see. All right. Um, oh, uh, Nira has told us about Hawk Moth. So it says... Hawk Moth's goal uh, is getting ladybugs and cat noirs miraculouses. They are the heroes. Miraculouses are some creatures who give these heroes their powers. All right, so it sounds like Hawk Moth wants this thing that the good guys have. And, well, again, probably it's going to be all these things that tell us about it. So maybe, Anura, you can tell us what is his backstory? Where did Hawk Moth come from? All right, send it to us quickly so that we don't, we don't miss out on that. Let's do um, another one of the ones that you guys said. Let's do Thanos, all right? Or Thanos, depending on how you want to say it. It's an interesting one. Everybody loves superhero movies. So let's do Thanos. All right, so let's go through our, uh, our characters again. Now, obviously, the, the good guys that Thanos is against is the Avengers. Uh, so we've got a lot of different uh, personalities there. So when we ask, is he similar or different to the protagonist, I think we can, we can say, let's look at just Iron Man. 
right? And is he different or similar to Iron Man? Because that's who kind of um, wins at the end. And I would say he's very different. Iron Man um, is jokey. He's charismatic in his own way. And, um, but they are similar in the way that they are both very smart, all right? So Thanos is smart. Iron Man is smart. And that makes them a match for each other. We think, and at the one uh, Infinity War movie, the villain wins. Thanos wins. All right. So that's actually a very interesting way to take the story uh, in that one movie is that not only is he a match for the hero, he actually wins because he does all the stuff. He makes the plans. He gathers the stones and he actually wins. Now, the, the interesting thing about Thanos is his point of view. So if you guys don't remember, uh, he thinks that the world and the universe is there's too many people too much population, and there are not enough resources. So what he wants to do is to half the population, kill randomly half the population, and then there will be enough resources in the universe. So in a way, we can kind of understand this. Uh, it makes sense in a certain way that, yes, there are a lot of people, and I think they're making a comment. Like we said, there's author's intention. They're making a comment about maybe in the world we live in, we've got to worry about resources for the future. Are we using up too many resources? Is the world getting too big? Are we using too much? And what's going to be the end result of that? We can't kill half of the population. So I think they're asking a very interesting question there. And it's an interesting point of view because we, we ourselves could think, well, if I'm one of the people that I don't have the resources, I, I'm struggling, I'm starving, and now there's less people, it's going to be better for me. So in a way, we can actually understand Thanos' point of view. So that is what makes him very different, very unique, and a rounded character, like you said, a good, effective bad guy. Obviously, just uh, there, there, there's a lot of stuff that people have talked about since the movie came out. And one of the things people have said is, well, instead of cutting half of the population, why doesn't he just increase the resources? So we can look at that as well and say, well, why doesn't he do that? That's probably because there wouldn't be a very interesting superhero movie if he did that. All right, so that is Thanos. And then also let's look at Maleficent because she is a very interesting character. And I think that will be our last one for today. You guys have been great with sending these interesting ones. All right, so we're going to look, I think, at the movie um, with Angelina Jolie, because that's the most recent Maleficent. Uh, Maleficent is like a, uh, a bad fairy, in a way. Um, and in the story, if I remember correctly, um, she uh, falls in love with the king, but then the king drugs her and cuts off her wings. And then she gets very angry. She wants revenge for this, obviously. And then um, she decides to kill the king's daughter, Aurora. Um, and eventually she actually comes to love the daughter, uh, Aurora, as her own daughter. So Maleficent is a really interesting character. Already from the story that I've described, we can see there is huge changes that she goes through. All right, She starts as a fairy maybe a dark fairy, but a fairy. She trusts the guy. She loses something. Uh, she gets very, very angry, wants revenge. Um, so she, she, her passion is up. And then she decides to kill Aurora to make everyone suffer. And then she goes through this other change of learning to love Aurora. So that is a lot of change for what is essentially the bad guy, the villain in the story. That's what makes her so interesting to watch. Um, we can look and see, obviously, the wants and needs she has and the motivation changes throughout the story, which, again, makes her a very interesting uh, character. She uh, is innocent at the beginning. Then she wants revenge. Then she wants love. It's very, very uh, complex. Uh, she's a match for the hero because she has, obviously, magic. Um, she obviously has a, a backstory. Um, it's interesting to think who is the hero in the story. So in the movie, Maleficent, she herself is also the hero because she's the main character that we watch. So we can understand 
that when she's being bad and evil, we understand why. So there's no real other protagonist. So she, she's almost like a tragic hero. And if she had continued the revenge that she wanted, she would have become a tragic hero that would have lived without love. But she changes at the end, and obviously it's a, it's a happy ending. It's a Disney ending. Um, all right, so I think that that is Maleficent. All right. Thank you guys so much for sending all the great uh, characters. They were fun uh, to analyze. And you can see how, and I want you guys to do this now. When you're watching a movie, um, whether it's a superhero movie or just a like a murder mystery, think about the villain, all right? And, and try to say, is it a good villain? Does, uh, do they go according to all these things? Are they well-rounded? Do they have backstory? And analyze your, uh, to yourself, what is the, uh, the effectiveness? of that bad guy. All right, uh, like I said, I'm gonna remind you again, go over to the community tab uh, on YouTube here. You're gonna get some great discounts, especially coming up is uh, Black Friday. And I think you can get up to 50% off. So go there, go check out all the social media from Cambly, uh, Instagram, whatever else, and keep watching for the discount codes. I think you can also still use the go live uh, discount code. Don't forget that that is our special one for you. So you can use that. Also get like a discount. I don't think you're going to get discount on discount, but you'll get some kind of discount. Uh, if you came in late and you missed part of the lesson, you can go rewatch it. It's going to be in the Cambly Live playlist. Uh, and there is a link which is pinned at the top of the, the chat. Uh, and you can watch all the other Cambly Live sessions from me, from everybody else. Uh, and again, if you guys don't know what Cambly is, it's a great platform where you can work on any kind of English you want. Whether it's English proficiency, we had one of our, uh, our uh, students today tell us they got 100% in their English test. It's amazing. I say congratulations again. Um, if you want to work on business English, conversation, even literature study, you're going to find someone to do that. I think there's a, a link down below if you want to try to contact me. And until we, got, we meet again, I'm going to say bye for now.